Hey, good evening. Good evening. How are you? How's everyone doing? Uh, I just want to share with you. Uh, this is not more like a podcast, but I, uh, I just wanted to kind of share and acknowledge and understand uh, this Jesus movement. The Jesus movement uh, really started in 30 to 33 AD when Jesus of Nazareth uh, just came down from heaven, born, started his ministry at 30 years old uh, after being baptized by John the Baptist. and had this movement of him uh, changing the world, changing the world on how we see religion, how we see spirituality, and also teaching and fulfilling the prophecy and the and the uh, the pro- fulfilling the prophecy, pretty much fulfilling the pro- uh, and the law, and fulfilling the law, and uh, the same Jesus who uh, was crucified was crucified, but it's believed Jesus uh, said he would die, he would come back, he crucified, and on three days he was resurrected from the dead, and after that launched the, after, launched a a an awesome series after Jesus came resurrected resurrected for forty days he. He dealt with uh, he dealt with his disciples, teaching his disciples, and he ascended unto heaven. But then, once the Holy Spirit came and replaced Jesus, a movement uh, like we've never seen in history uh, took this world by storm. Which is the, uh, many people call it the way, many people call it the Jesus movement, and some uh, at the time uh, we started calling it what we call Christianity. And Peter and Paul, by the time you get to around. 60 AD in Rome, Peter and Paul had changed the course of religion, changed the course of spirituality, and 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 took this uh, newfound way to a whole nother level. It was Peter who preached his first sermon uh, after the Holy Spirit came, and thousands of people and thousands of souls were added to the church. So this is the official uh, marking of the church. Uh, but even during that process, uh, you see Peter navigating uh, through his journey, preaching and teaching, most of the, mostly in Jerusalem. He started his ministry in Jew- and preaching to Jews. But at the same time, his counterpart, who was Paul, known as Saul of Tarsus, at the time was persecuting Christians for years, for at least about five or six years. He led the the persecution of Christians or those individuals that were part of the Jesus movement because Paul was a traditional uh, Jew and he was like all the other Pharisees and leaders, religious leaders of that time wanted this to stop. Uh, But however, in the story of we get in the book of Acts, Paul uh, has an encounter with Jesus Christ and he's thrown off his beast, he's blinded and he changes the whole scope. So the same zeal and energy uh, that Paul was putting into trying to destroy the movement or destroy the way, he would became one of the chief uh, preachers and apostles in leading this movement. Now, now Peter, Peter primarily focused on Jews, traditional Jews. Well, Paul is the reason why Gentiles have been able to receive Christianity. He had a great movement, been on multiple, at least three missionary journeys uh, through Rome and all of Asia Minor. Uh, and Peter doing the same thing, back and forth to Rome, spreading the gospel, telling, converting uh, Gentiles, converting Jews. But even in the midst of these, these conversions and trying to grow, uh, they had their differences. Paul and Peter had their differences of, of conversion. They Peter felt like that Gentiles should have to be circumcised and, and should have to go through the same ritual that Jewish men and women had to go through, while Paul felt like circumcision was of the heart and there was no need. And he created this uh created this council that they had to have these conversations, uh debates on trying to establish the doctrine of the church, the doctrine of the church. So this is when you see the doctrine of the church. And by the time you get to 60 AD and and, and furthermore, uh, you see Peter, both Peter and Paul uh, being arrested in numerous times, being arrested, being beaten, but never gave up on their faith, never gave up on preaching the gospel and printing out the message, uh, no matter how different they were. Then after 
60 AD, and you start getting to the mid uh, 60s, now you start seeing the epistles uh, that are written. 13 of them was written by uh, Paul. Uh, Peter wrote some. The other disciples are writing letters to the church, either admonishing or encouraging the church during this time. But also, everyone is not accepted. Uh, you still have Jewish leaders, traditional Jewish leaders who are not accepting of the way. You have Gentile Romans uh, who have issues with this, thinking they're stirring up the people against the gods of Rome and those different idol gods and Greek gods. So during this time, they're having a very strong impact on the growth of the way, the Jesus movement, or what we call today Christianity. Uh, shout out to Peter and Paul because with their sacrifice and their drive and their zeal, uh, I do not believe without these two individuals that Christianity we even come across through not only Europe, but all the way through the United States and across and around the world. Uh, Christianity, I believe, is one of the largest, probably the largest religions in the world, but due to Peter and Paul's work, due to Peter and Paul's commitment uh, to the way and to Jesus Christ. And I say that uh, their faith and commitment all the way to the death uh, tells you that, hey, there must be some truth. There must be some reality of, if you want to call it the myth of Jesus Christ, which is not a myth of Jesus Christ dying and resurrection. And that's what they preached. That's what they stood on. And this time, 60, the church has been taking the world by storm. Uh, it's still a persecuted church around this time. Uh, it's still not heavily accepted. But these two men, uh, through their work and through their efforts, this is the reason why we have Christianity. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this small presentation. Y'all be blessed. Y'all have a good one.